द नेक्स्ट पेपर प्रेजेंटर मिस्टर सुंदर चक्रवर्ती एंड द टॉपिक फॉर हिज प्रेजेंटेशन इज प्रिसन ऑफ इक्विनॉक्सिस एंड सन्स ट्रांजिट इन द वृद्ध गार्गीय ज्योतिष मिस्टर सुंदर यस्टे इन फैक्ट वी हैड अ ब्रीफ एक्चुअल इंट्रोडक्शन टू हिज वर्क थ्रू प्रोफेसर अयंगर सर प्रेजेंटेशन आस्पेक्ट he is a student of indian astronomy and indian history of science works such as uh, parashar tantra vridha gargiya jyotish and vedanga jyotish surya surya siddhanta um, and he is presently researching at chc jain university uh, he has co-authored uh, papers in springer uh, with professor ayangar sir and that's the topic that you can also see here so uh, simulation i think and visualization would be a very involving way um, of understanding cosmology for any lay person so i think that's a very powerful mode of presenting the the puranic and siddhantic cosmology so good afternoon everybody i work with professor ayengar at chc and uh, this is a topic i have been uh, working for some time and there's a paper published so i'll just summarize the paper here so this is a small presentation of about 11 slides uh, first few slides will be uh, some introduction to observational astronomy and then there with three or four slides about the content of the paper Uh, so the what is jyotish shastram you know uh, when i was young i thought jyotisham is about uh, individual predictions it's slightly that's one aspect of it uh, that's a popular aspect of it but jyotish shastram here we mean uh, the study of uh, astro it's a natural science a study of celestials uh, in, in uh, particularly the path of the sun moon and the planets in the background of stars makes uh, 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 is an important dimension of this study and if you look at the history that's been mentioned through the day it starts with observations uh, from coarse observation to fine observations to a computational model that is uh, tra uh, tra tra trajectory of the indian astronomical sciences vridha garga jyotisha is an important work in this uh, sequence and it's a big text of about 500 verses 5000 verses my apologies and uh, uh, spread over 64 angas some main and some upangas and uh, chc is already published seven critical uh, and a critical edition with seven chapters spanning the first and the second anta for this talk we are going to talk about i am going to touch on aditya aditya chara and ritu sabava both of them cover the sun's transit through the nakshatras one is in the 11 sections the other is in the 59 section a bit far off so this you know just to set some background as to what ayana means what uttarayana means dakshina ayana means so this picture basically if you are an observer looking east through the year and if you observe the sunrise and if i can point this you will see the sunrise in the extreme uh, extreme south here which is which is the uttarayana point from where the sun starts journeying north so this whole journey is called uttarayana in the middle the sunrise due east which is the midpoint which is the equinox which is a kind of a zero point uh, then it goes to the extreme north where from where it starts the southern journey so this uh, there are two ayanas per year and the midpoint of the ayana when it's moving northward is uttarayana and by convention we also have uh, there are some numbers given here so that we have some quantitative feel for this journey and also we can do mathematical analysis on top of it so currently the vernal equinox is taken as 0 degrees and the uttarayana the winter solstice start is taken as 270 this actually is an important event throughout uh, many descriptions where the year really starts at the uh, when the uttarayana start or the winter solstice so ideally this should have been zero but you know all this convention has stuck so we are just sticking with that convention slightly busy slide but uh, 
Uh, uh, the other thing you want to understand is, you know, what are nakshatras? Uh, so, you know, I've been struggling with try, try to answer that, but, you know, it's, uh, you can think of them as zones in the sky, and also you can think of them as stars in that zone of the sky. So, they are the zones or the stars in the ecliptic belt. The ecliptic belt is the, is a belt in the sky through which the sun, moon, and the planets pass. So they don't uh, pass through everywhere. So there's a small belt in the sky through which they pass. And they contain one or more constituents. So in this picture, if you see, these are the nakshatras. So it's the Dhanishta, Shatabisha, and all those things. These are the nakshatras that are marked here. And these are the constituents uh, ataras in it. So they, they try to show that the clean definition of nakshatras is a good uh, abstraction to have, but in reality, you know, it is consisting of many individual stars spanned all over the place. To an observer, this is a nakshatra. To a mathematician, these segments are a nakshatra. So we got to struggle with those two definitions side by side. And of course, you know, there's a clock dial here. There's a clock model here. So the sky can be thought of as a clock with the sun as a year hand and the moon as a month hand, something like hour and minute hand. And of course, the sun does a Uttarayana and Dakshinayana cycle per year. And the moon actually covers this whole round in one sidereal month. So it's, the clock analogy fits very well here. And the sun is a Ritukara. He, may, he makes the seasons. As he goes along, he makes the seasons one after the other. There are six seasons mentioned here. And uh, there is something called precession I'll come back to later. So you want to keep this picture in mind. Um, and uh, if you look at the text, some nakshatras are clear uh, in terms of, you know, we know what the constituent taras are, and some have some ambiguity. Uh, so a lot of papers discuss this, Gondlekar, Abhyankar, Professor Vaya also done it, and Saha Lahiri have published this. Of course, our ancient uh, texts, uh, Parashatantra, Vedragage, Jyotish, and others also have sufficient information for us to make reasonable uh, estimates of what these taras should be. So this, this, uh, this, to just, this slide is to understand the precision. Let me see if we can just show a picture first and then I'll come back to. All right, I'm, uh, it got stuck here. Anyway, I'll, I'll continue here. So this is, uh, this is a globe. This is a celestial sphere that you know, was mentioned earlier today. And you know, this is the point, the easternmost point that I talked about. Assume this is the eastern point, most point of the, uh, the sunrise. Now, if we track the easternmost point of the sunrise over many thousands of years, so in the year 2000, this was associated with Uttarashada, Nakshatra, that went along with it. Around zero, it was Ashwini. Around 1000, it was Barani. Uh, in, the, in the current phase, uh, you know, it's around minus 2000, it's Kritika. I'm sorry, it's all negative thousands. So uh, in the current time, it is Uttara Proshtapada. So if you look at it, the equinoctial nakshatra over the period of time has changed. And that is due to the precession. The precession is basically the Earth. Uh, 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 if you think of Earth as a globe, which is spinning, you can think of it as a top, which is spinning, but also wobbling. That wobble causes the pole star to change. So and this pole, st the, correspondingly, the equinoctial star will also change, nakshatra also changes. So if you look at it, the pole star also has changed from in 2000 from to uh, the current time it is in Polaris, and in uh, 5,000 years ago it was pointing to Tuban. So this precision is an important phenomena uh, that we use to date the uh, text that we have. I just mentioned about nakshatras. You know, we saw that nakshatras as a clock. Uh, and a dial, and this is a listing of the nakshatras, and over each nakshatra there are constituent taras, and then all the nakshatras also have uh, shapes or astrographs, and these can be inferred from uh, Vridhagagya, Jyotisha, Parashatantra, Atharvaveda, Parishishta, among, these are the Vedic texts, and uh, uh, Shardula Karnavadana is a Buddhist text, and Surya Chandra Pagnatni is a Jain text, so these texts also have a information, largely aligned with some differences, especially with Abhijit, which is dropped in the Vedic text, but continue to live in the other traditions. And if you look at Ashlesha, for example, Ashlesha is a, a shape of a flag or a sarpa, and you can see that shape here. Rohini is a shakata, which is a shape of a Vedic cart, a triangle. 
Maga is a costa, which is the shape of an uh, enclosure or a room. So some of them were very apparent to us now, and some, because we don't have the cultural connect, do not match, but you know, we can imagine them to be. So. So this is the first, uh, the Aditya chapter, Aditya Chara chapter, the, uh, the earlier chapter. And here, um, did I mention something? One more, ah, this one. Yeah. So Aditya Chara chapter, the 11th Anga, has six mantras or shlokas, which have uh, very nicely tabulated information regarding the relation of uh, the seasons with the uh, nakshatras associated with it. And they're also slightly more specific instead of being nakshatra, they also say nakshatra begin, nakshatra mid, nakshatra end. So they have, if you look at this Shavishta Adini Chatwari, Paushna Ardhancha Divakaraha, this basically says from Shavishta beginning to Revati mid, Shishir Ritav, which translates to 270 to 330 degrees in our convention. And we just break down the whole shloka into this range. So this is, this gives us a clue of when, what is a marker for the season and what are the marker for all the six seasons with respect to these nakshatras. And for each of the nakshatras, we already know the constituent stars and their proxy stars. So this, uh, this gives us a way of age uh, dating this, not with respect to one nakshatra, which is typically done with Dhanishtha, but with respect to nine points. And so we can get a better estimate of the date with the lower error bands. Incidentally, the same information is also in Parashra Tantra as prose. And there, uh, six ritus are mapped. Uh, actually, there are, it maps six ritus to four and of nakshatras. And uh, so using six bright stars. And using that, uh, Professor's book has dated this to this band around 200 years. Uh, this is based on the visibility. And in our approach, we have taken a slightly uh, minimizing the error approach. So we are getting uh, an improved uh, uh, error band uh, of around 50 years. And we have, uh, in our approach, we have considered the nine se seasonal nakshatras pointed here, the 27 proxy nakshatras that were in the table, and also all the 83 constituent stars. We're trying to figure out if the numbers converge and uh, see which one of them fits best. There's a bit of math here, but you know, just because I put some effort, I left it here. But the, uh, the, uh, the idea is to find the best fit method to find the epoch where most of the stars mentioned in the text uh, of the nakshatras are in their prescribed seasonal span. So that is the problem statement. And for that, we defined an error measure. The, the, the idea of the error measure is to see if a nakshatra of if the taras of the nakshatra fall in their band, they get, uh, they're considered to be perfect fit. If they are outside the band, then we, the nearest boundary, the distance to the nearest boundary is taken as the error for that nakshatra. So using that measure for multiple epochs from minus 2500 to 500 in steps of 50 years, we measure the error for each of those uh, uh, 83, 27, 9, and 27, Abhyankar, I'll come back to that in a bit. But uh, different sets of uh, uh, stars, we kind of me measure the errors, and they, they all beautifully converge into somewhere around 1250. So this chart also explains the same thing, but slightly more visual. Uh, the red, red indicates that more number of nakshatras are in their seasons. Season. So as you go farther and further away, most of the nakshatras don't fit in the season mentioned in the text. As we come around this band, the, there is a maximum fit. The Swati and Uttarashada, a couple of nakshatra, problematic nakshatras don't fit, but the, the rest of them fit very well. So we take it that uh, this particular, the earlier shloka, uh, the Aditya Chara chapter, they show around this period, 1250 BCE. have a few more slides, that's all. So th th I mentioned Abhyankar there. So Abhyankar has published a paper where uh, alternate uh, stars for uh, uh, starting from Abhijit uh, 
Danishta or Shravishta uh, and Shavana are taken. And so if we, if, just to make sure that uh, this dating is sensitive to that description of the nakshatra, which those arguments are also valid. We plot and you know they also come to the same region. In fact, uh, there is another plot that uh, is slightly more complicated as skip, but it, it goes back to a little bit before also. So, Saha and Lahiri has a list. Also, the uh, text of Parashra Tantra and the Virga, Vidraga Yudhya along with the astrographs and the relative positions. So, we have taken those things. So this Parashra Tantra, you know, Vidyagargya Jyotisha is the source for this. So bright and stars around this is the second question. So bright stars? No, no, no. Yes. But the number of stars mentioned for each constellation. Right, right. Does that add up to 83? Right. That adds up to 83. It adds up to 83. Okay. So now, if you physically identify them with the stars as we see them today, hmm. if it's only 83 or there can be more stars which could fill in that space. No, it in our approach, it will be 83. If you physically see, you know, I have not done for all 83, but I'm guess, I am I, fairly confident it will map up to 83. I have not validated each one of them. It's not around the eclipse. Will it still be assigned to the area? <laughs> yeah, the, the problem is that the eclipse is happening at the same time as the ancient texts. All of them, they give multiple stars. No. Nakshatras are not precisely 27 discrete entities. No, no, the division I'm saying. Actually, the division is that. And uh, so the bright stars around the ecliptic, that is an independent thing. Ecliptic is a circle. Uh -huh. So in that, uh, let's say 83 bright stars are there very near that. You know? So then... No, no, you know, they don't do like that. If, if they were like that, they would have been different. The way that we have understood is that 83, the, the basic things have been selected due to moon's position. How it was done is not very clear. But each constellation says, for example, Rohini, they are very clear it has five stars. It is, the bright star is Aldebaran, but the others are above that, you know. And they wanted yeah, a yeah, graph, yeah, yeah. they wanted a triangle to get for them, like the Vedic Soma Shakata, Soma Yada Shakata, that is what it says. So similarly, for Maga, it has to be like a koshta, like a room. And for Jeshta, it has to be like uh, yeah. Tanta, Hastadanta, Mala. See, the giant say it has to be like a Gajadanta, like it has to be an ivory stick. And for uh, Ashtasha, it has to be a hood. So it is not the brightness, it is the figure they have taken when they were rising. And in Parasana Tantra, it gives the directions also. In the, the north is there is one star, south is another star kind of thing. Our identification may be slightly wrong, but by and luck, that is what it is. So, what is the relation between these names and the shapes? For uh, Magha, you are saying that it is like a room cost, but uh, I don't see any relation with the name and. Uh, any relation between? No, names name, and shape. name and shape. shape. Name name and is shape. shape. Is there. No, no. The text is the shape mentioned. Is I think what is no, no, it is mentioned. In the text it is mentioned, Koshta And oh, Koshta is a name sorry. for Maka. An why, 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 why? Why? No, because those five stars, six stars, if you join them, they look like a room. But why Maka? Every, everybody has every imagination. So you can construct so many things, but uh, that is okay. But why? It I can't answer all the way. I don't know. No, no. If it is like a room, Koshta, his question is why did they name it Maka? Then he, they could have oh. made it to Koshta. That is the original name. That is the Vedic name. Oh. And that is oh. described here. Oh. It looks like that. You want That's to identify the Vedic star, Maka, Pitra Daivatam, then the uh, Jyotisha books, Vidyagarga and uh, Parasar Tantra says, then it is made of six stars which looks like a koshta. <coughs> that is what it says. It and must be somewhere else in the Vedas that we, we have to search. Uh, we have to search. Yeah, uh, yeah it's a possibility. In the Kapishtal Samhita and the Kata Samhita, there are more astronomical statements than in the Taitiriya. Maitrani also has more astronomical statements. 
that will have to be searched and found out. We are not yet. We are doing that. Yeah, yeah, please. You please proceed. See, it is said that only Vrushchika has the natural, you know, yeah, yeah, but yeah, you can directly see. Others are all imagination. Mostly. No, uh, no, no. See, Jeshka, I think he showed that yeah, uh, you can figure. Ashmesha is like a snake. And that, you know, I can convince myself it's a snake. It can be shown. Yes. Very, uh, there, are, there are few that, are, that match very well, and few, I think, because we are culturally so far apart, we are not able to imagine. <laughs> Okay. This takes us to the second chapter, which is the Ritu Subhava. This is a much later chapter in the book. And here, uh, it's a, this is an interesting uh, description of the sun's path. Um, here, it mentions, uh, for, uh, the sun's path is mentioned in terms of uh, 12 Vaidika and 12, and they are equivalent Laukika names. Madhu is mapped to Ch uh, Chaitra Masa. And it also tells you the nakshatra in which they belong. So, Revati. So, all these 12 months, uh, both the Vaidika months and the Laukika months, and their corresponding nakshatras are given. So, instead of the sixth uh, uh, partition here, here is a 12 part here. Um, and uh, they also the nakshatras are plotted here. And we did the same uh, same uh, kind of minimization and error of information uh, error uh, for this information that was given, and the, the red line shows it. And this minimize this particular show card they show around minus 500. So the interesting part is, you know, the the season and uh, the transit of the sun is given in two paces, but they seem to be about 800 years apart. So this leads us to uh, we think that uh, this Vidyagarhi uh, tradition is a compilation of knowledge as we go along with more uh, with a refined model as time progresses. And in Ritu Sobhava, of course, the, uh, the Ritu sequence begins with Vasanta and Shishira. That is, in the way they describe. So there seems to be some movement for the start of the year pointing to Vasanta from Shishira. And the Ritu, as I said, is related to months, not the Nakshatra span and boundaries. So this is, uh, looks like slightly most refined way of, uh, or uh, small brain uh, time description. And of course, uh, Shavishta is past its time, whereas Shavishta was at the beginning. So this is a hint of the precision. And there's a, this is an important uh, conclusion that professor has made. The 12th month solar zodiac obviously intercalation emerges. So the solar zodiac can be seen here. It is not something that you know somebody else has to tell us. It's already mentioned here very clearly. There is no doubt at all as to what this is. So in closing, you know, there is a progression, you know, uh, in the early Vedic text, the two ayana to the system, because there uh, those can be thought of around minus 1700 BC. And of course, we did the Adi around 1250, it starts uh, by having a four and a half nakshatra per season. By the time we are to Sopa, it is a 12 month solar cycle. VGJ is layered. And of course, this is, uh, this is what we wanted to highlight, the solar zodiac references for that in unambiguous terms is available in Indian tradition. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. This, uh, yeah. When did this Vedic month names change to this Taitra Vaishaka? Can we know when they identified? The, I generally I think it believe because the Purnima happens near that star, right? Yeah. So, uh, any, so any? I, I, the dating of it is a, is a problem to be solved. But this is, in my mind, the first textual references where these months are used in the solar context. So these months are used in the lunar context somewhere else earlier. But in the solar context, this is the first time it is used. When it was origin and what is its relation to the nakshatra with the full moon, there are some speculation, but I don't have firm answers now. It's a good question. So, I mean, so am I right in uh, understanding the in the following manner? Your assertion is that, you know, Rather, you didn't say this, but normally it is believed that all these zodiacal division, Mesha, Kusaba, etc., is borrowed from the Greeks. Normal. I'm not saying you. So you are saying that no, actually this uh, zodiacal division is associated in Indian texts much before the you know any possible borrowing from the Greeks. Am I right in understanding? No, no, it comes from Mesopotamia. Exactly. No, but no, but no, okay. <laughs> 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 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah exactly. That's what. This is what you want to tell. Yeah, I want to a little bit elaborate on what you said. The zodiac, solar zodiac. If that is what we are talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As it is understood, it is the movement of sun. Yeah. In relation to time on earth for human beings, how much he has moved there in relation to my time here. Initially, there were all the felt seasons. The ruthus were felt summer or winter or other thing. Now, if you compare the east and the west, as you are telling, the Babylonians had only four seasons. They have the solar zodiac yeah, yeah. around the same time. Yes, yes. At least that is what Winder, Warden, and others they have given. They have four seasons. There are six seasons. This six also is not original. It is the two that he migrated in already cut two ayanas is the original because there it is said Saumya and Agneya. They felt feeling to human beings. Yesterday I mentioned about the Kala. The Kala continues the description of Kala in that and then it goes to the, these descriptions. I could not cover that, you know. Whereas here the six, then it becomes twelve. In between there is one Chatur Masya also. That is also a zodiac, zodiacal system of solar zodiacal thing. So it is two, then you know Chatur Masya three divisions, then it went to four, I mean six divisions, then it became twelve. The Jains have still maintained their Chatur Masya divisions as it is. So this is the difference. So the... Chatur Masya means the... Four three, months, three, four three, months, four months, four months, three, three, three partitions. Three, three partitions. Three. The Babylonians had four partitions. They never had three. No, even Greeks had only four. Right? Yeah, four, only four, four partitions. Ashokan inscriptions talk about uh, three divisions of four Sorry. months. Ashokan inscriptions uh -huh. uh, have uh, three, four, di four month divisions. Three yeah, that is the Chatur Masya. Uh -huh. Chatur, Chatur Masya. Nice. Babylonian is not before 6th century BC, sir. Uh, because Molapin, I think the last... Uh, Meshadi, no, we won't find it. We'll talk about it later. Yes, sir. Thank you for a nice presentation. Uh, I was uh, seeing of uh, the, um, the fitting with the minimum idol we were searching for, and I can infer that the error bar is less than one, year, one degree, I think, in the vertical direction. One degree error bar could, could be that. My question is, are you, because of the long time span, 2500 before Christ and this kind of, so it's three or 4,000 years ago, are you taking account the proper motion of the stars? Yes. So a good question. So, proper motion is taken into account. The, the data is being harvested from stellarium. It's not uh, computed based on precision. But I found out that computation based on precision is a lazy and reasonably good way. The proper motion doesn't contribute too much except for a couple of nutshells, except a couple of stars. So, proper motion, while its point is valid, doesn't contribute to any significant additional error here. Because it, it should be about uh, Three degrees or something like that, the proper motion. Three degrees, probably not. Uh, maybe in case of Swati, it may be of that order, of that uh, degree plus order. But for others, it is not of so, that order. So it's, it's not moving the, the dates? No. Precision causes a lot more drift than the proper motion. Yeah, okay. yeah. Proper motion in the latitude becomes important. Yeah. But we are not considering the latitude. And in fact, that may have some effect on observation of planets in the nakshatra system, which of course is a different uh, aspect altogether. Yes, I, I was thinking before when, when we, we were th thinking about a big digger like a, like a clock. Maybe in that case it can change because uh, of two, three degrees that, you know, the, the clock can change. Yeah, I, yeah so that is okay. okay. Yeah, it can change. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, excuse me, sir. Sir, I have a question. Oh, yeah. There was a discussion on the names of the stars. So, can we say that uh, one way of uh, naming that based on the shapes of those stars? So, another way, can we say that uh, what are the experience on those days? For example, when I say Pushya, 
So even etymological meaning also Pushyanti Aspin Artha Haiti Pushyaha. So when sun enters Ardra star, then rainy season starts. So Ardra, Punarvasu, Pushya, for these three stars, uh, can we say that with this, with this reason, uh, these stars are named in this, in this way? So is it possible? Is it uh, good? Is originally called Tishya, I think. Uh -huh, yeah, but Pushya also is there. Pushya Shishya Nakshatra is a Panini Sutra and he gives in, in this way. No, no, no. Yeah. We should not jump to Panini from Vedas. Uh, no, I am not saying that this is a prop, I mean, it is there in the tradition also, this kind of explanation of these names, yeah. it is there in the tradition also, therefore I just... Uh, uh, no, Astanama should not accept such traditions, is our, my argument. The Vayakarna tradition, which in fact in the morning, I think, uh, M.D. Shreen was in one of the slides he showed, Vayakarnas, they, uh, you know, justify anything by Pratyas and this argument, that argument, but uh, Astanama should not do that, he says. I abide by that system. It is just a joke. Uh, yeah, but I found that uh, that uh, those names of I mean those reasons also convincing. Therefore, it's not uh, necessary because it's pre-Pandyan names. Yeah. These are all pre-Pandyan names. So when we know that Vrindagarka uh, was minimum 500 BC, the names why necessarily take it up? You know they would have done something later. Tishya, what you are telling, is a single star as per, uh, you know, the later uh, argument. But Jainas and Bhagas are three stars. And it is given a shape also, like a Sharava. Whereas there is no shape for others. And you see, the push, it is like a crab, you know. There is a can cancer. It is a very important thing. You can see in the thing, it looks like a crab. But in the Sanskrit names later on, it is only a single star. Oh, why the shape itself is not taken there, if you take the single one. But the others have taken the shape and given the names. We are here very happy seeing the interactive discussions happening with all of the paper presenters. And uh, that shows that all of the paper presenters have put their heart into what they are doing. And that is, you know, arousing interest with all the scholars. <laughs> <laughs>